It's project time. I'm Preston, and today we're going to be looking at LED panel lights. This is going to be part one of a series of videos. So today we're going to look at what are LED panel lights, how do they work as opposed to traditional lighting, and what different ways can you install them, how do they dim, and just a good overview. Here in my basement, I have a fairly typical drop ceiling. More often you see these in commercial or industrial settings. This is a standard two foot by two foot square drop ceiling. So it turns out they make panel lighting that fits exactly inside these squares. Uh, you can also get them for two foot by four foot drop ceilings, uh, which are also very common. So the idea would be you remove this light fixture, you remove this whole tile, you put in the panel light that's flush with the ceiling here and wire it in and you then have a much nicer light. So here's a set of LED panel lights that I bought off Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. I am not endorsing this particular brand, uh, not sponsored by anyone. This just seemed to be what would fit my needs the best with the features and the price. Typically you'll find these when bought in packages of four to six, tend to be a, work out to around $40 a panel, give or take, depending on what features you want or what brand name it is. So let's open it up. So you can see how these are packed in. It's very nice and tight. You can see how small they are. Thin. It looks like I'm pulling out a pair of these together. Very well packed. Now you can see. And this is what the lights look like. So you can see how this will fit. Look just like one of the tiles. Nice and smooth. Very thin here, little clips to fit onto the drop ceiling brackets. And here is a little wiring box. And here are little switches to set the light temperature and to set the power. All right, so as I said, there are controls here. This one, particular panel you can switch between 6,000K, 5,000K, and 4,000K. That's uh, so you can adjust how white or yellow the light is. That's one of the reasons I picked this uh, particular panel. There are a lot of panels that only put out one color of light and a number that have a similar setting for a range of different colors. Uh, this one also can go 40, 30, or 20 watts. So you can adjust the brightness However, it's also dimmable, so if you're using the dimming setting, you might as well leave it at 40 and just have a wider range. Now, you can see there are little punch outs here, little circles. You can punch one of those out to run the wires in. And then this is the electrical panel box, electrical box where you wire it up. And in here, you see several different wires. There's a ground wire here. There are a purple and gray wire here, which is for the dimming, and a white and a black wire. Now to wire this up just for demonstration purposes, I have an old power cord that I happened to have a problem with the one end of it, so I cut it off. So I'm gonna strip the wires down and connect them up and plug it in just as a demonstration. That will also let me test the different color levels and I can decide which one I want when I set it up in this room. So I strip the wire. I have a wire stripper here. Let's see how well this works. Strip the insulation off without stripping. 
Oh, there we go. Just bend it a little bit once it's started and the insulation on the outside pulls off. And now I just need to strip these wires. If you're doing this a lot, buy better wire strippers than I have. That's one lesson here. And now I just need to attach these with wire nuts and plug it in. This one didn't come with wire nuts. So that's a good thing to be aware of. That you may need your own wire nuts for installing this. That feels tight. This is just temporary. That's good and tight. And even though it's temporary, I will do the ground because I want to be safe. Especially with the connection being recently done in case I did something wrong. Good to be safe. There we go, it's wired up. Now normally I would punch out one of these holes and have this wire running through that, but it would actually be a wire in the ceiling that's hardwired in, but I'm not going to do that for the demonstration. Now for the test, I'm gonna plug it in. We have a whole lot of light. Now this is on the 6,000, 5,000, 4,000. You can really see the difference in light. This feels very cold and industrial. This is kind of neutral, and this is kind of home. I don't know. I think I like this one. And we can see this is 40. 30, 20. Now the camera is probably adjusting for the light levels automatically, so I don't know how well that's going to show up on the video, but this is kind of like manual dimming. Uh, so that's what we have. Now let's look at the dimmer. For dimming, uh, these lights work a little differently than what you might be used to. Uh, a normal dimmer switch controls the power that's going through the line into the light. These don't work this way, that way. Instead, there's a industrial standard that's used in like office buildings and such for dimming, where you have a separate control signal for dimming and then the light itself manages the dimming. So essentially there's a built-in dimmer. It sends out a signal on one of these wires that's 10 volts and then this dimmer switch is basically a potentiometer meaning a variable resistor that will result in the signal coming back being somewhere between 0 and 10 volts and it uses that to determine how much to dim it. Now the interesting thing about that is that means that the dimmer portion of the switch is completely independent of the off and on. So we can set up the dimmer on a completely separate set of wires from the power. So I have this particular dimmer switch. That, uh, I'll put the link for it on the uh, description. And as you can see, uh, it's set up, it's got the red wires so you can do a three-way switch if you need to as well as ground and all of that but th these are for the 0 to 10 volt connection and you can see they're the same colors as the ones on here so I can just hook them straight on and uh, demonstrate without even running the power through the switch This only came with one of the small wire nuts, the dimmer switch. So I went and grabbed another one that I had handy. Uh, 
always good to have an assortment of wire nuts if you do this kind of project. I will mention that on my review of this on Amazon, that it was just missing a wire nut, because you don't want that. The switch should come with everything needed to connect it. Now normally, you would run some other wires between the light and the wall for the dimmer switch, but for demonstrations, this is good. And uh, you can use pretty much any wire for that. They make now uh, wire that has your two conductors, the ground, plus the two wires for the zero to 10 volt dimming. So if you're installing a completely new wire from your wall switch to the light, you can do that. If you're using existing wiring, people have recommended using uh, thermostat wires. I've seen people say use Cat5, but use uh, two of a twisted pair together. Lots of different ways of wiring. It's only up to 10 volts, so it really doesn't matter that much what you use. So now this is wired up, and I'm going to plug it back in. And we have very little light. Why is that? Interesting. This should be lighting up. Unplug it and see what I did wrong. I found out why it wasn't working. I apparently had a bad connection. So I rewired it. And now, with the dimmer switch only connected with the two dimmer wires, I can turn on the light. And then I can dim it. Using just the dimmer part, even though there's no 120 volt AC running through the dimmer switch. It's just that 10 volt DC connection. That's pretty cool. Let's measure the actual resistance of the dimmer switch. Now I've disconnected the dimmer portion. So I'll set my multimeter to ohms, and the dimmer is dimmed, which if the wires are connected together, meaning very low resistance, the light goes off. So I should get fairly low resistance. So all the way dim, I'm getting... about 53.6 ohms, and uh, full bright should be really high resistance. And I'm getting uh, 0.410 mega ohms, so about 410 ohms. So that's kind of the range in resistance that this particular dimmer switch is putting out. A uh, slightly wider range may give a wider setting of uh, brightness here, but that's how it works. So there are three ways to mount these lights. As I said at the beginning, the ideal design is to mount them in a drop ceiling like this. You can also get mounting kits to mount them on a regular flat ceiling that essentially are four pieces of metal that stick down about an inch uh, with nice trim on the side uh, to mount on a regular flat ceiling. You can also get wires with hanging clips to mount it hanging down from a ceiling uh, if you have a higher up ceiling or an unfinished ceiling. Well, thank you for joining me for my part one video on LED panel lights. I hope you found this useful in understanding what the, these panel lights are, how the dimming works, 
and where they might be useful. I intend to do several other parts on this where I show actually installing them in different places in my basement. I will put the links to those in the description once I've completed those videos. Thank you for joining me.